Good afternoon. I now call to order the April 10th, 2024 meeting of the Budget Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. To conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Vea if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum may be maintained. Ms. Vea, will you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of this committee? Thank you, Ms. Kamenowski. Mr. McMillian? Here. Ms. Oprah Dwyer? Here, and I will have to leave the meeting early. Thank you. Ms. Henn? Present. Ms. Dominowski? Here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vea. Will you please call the roll of any staff members participating in today's meeting? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Hartlove? Here. Mr. Tantler? Present. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vea. Um, before we get started, there will be um, a change to the agenda. We are going to move the um, discussion on fixed um, budget expenses to the next meeting. Um, we're still kind of formulating how we're going to talk about that. And plus, we still we have um, two other agenda items that we want to cover tonight. So I think moving that one to the next meeting will be a good idea. If there's any objections, please let me know. Ms. Tomanowski, can you clarify just what that topic is? Um, so the fixed budgets are, I mean, it's basically what we are required to pay um, that we can't, that we have anything that, you know, we can't budget, like we can't, um, you know, move on, like whether it's healthcare or um, uh subscriptions or things that we have to buy for the blueprint or for things that we have to account for because of MSDE or uh, they I, I will get together more my idea my thought of it but it's really anything that is is fixed like you know the we get the, um, the health care premiums that we have to pay and what that number is that we're given that we have to pay does that make sense like you can't, it's not something that we can go out and budget on our own. Um, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I, um, I guess we'll just need to see further guidance from you what you'll be looking for. Okay, I mean, there's, I sent that description. I mean, we have a fixed, you know, it's everything that's included in that, what I sent, oh, I didn't put you on that email, I'm sorry. Hold on, um, let me pull it up real quick. So basically, if you look, looked at the, um, from the the January budgeting report that we did in, uh, on, in March that you put, that was in the, um, gosh, the work session meeting on March 19th that had, um, on page five, it talked about fixed charges and what it consists of, you know, cost of employee benefits, health insurance, um, employer, like stuff like retirement plans, um, contribution to OPEB, um, like those fixed charges that you have, like that it's just, I've never really seen that line item in our budget. You know, when we do the line budget transfers, I, I at least this most recent one, I was looking for a line item that said, you know, pays to the healthcare or paid to, to FICA or whatever it is. So I'm just kind of curious to know how much we are required to pay in healthcare every year. Uh, okay, uh, just an FYI I, I, for after the meeting, if you uh, grab your budget book, the very last page has all all of our total benefit charges listed by line item, the very last page. You want to see all our medical, OPEB, pension, they're all listed there. Just FYI, but you know, next month we can. Uh, I'll have to look for that one. I, I haven't, I've, like I've never seen mm -hmm. that. Is it just, I but mean, it, is that, is it a mat, like, is that a total amount for, or is it just kind of per employee, or is it a, the actual total? The total I, I budget for each of our 
fringe benefit lines on the very last page of the budget book. Hmm. Okay. You wouldn't see it on a budget line transfer report because the budget line transfer report talks about things moving between activities. And we wouldn't normally need to do that to fringe benefits. Because remember the budget, the budget, uh, you know, gets approved by activity. We go through the budget line transfer report each quarter, which uh, I'm assuming we'll do today real quick. And then that equals the bat, which is at next week's board meeting, because in the end, uh, our budget has to be a approved by activity. So, you know, next week we'll move enough money to make sure with our final spending, we have enough money in each activity. But during the year, we could uh, move stuff in or out of fringe benefits, but that's not normally something we need to do. So that's why it doesn't show up in the budget line transfer report. Typically, it's not to say it's never been in it. I don't know off the top of my head. Just uh, do you have that in front of you? Could you read like a line item? To I'm trying to look for well, it right I, now, and I'm I, um, just, I just, I just have a, was curious a, as to like. Uh, county a OPEB plan contribution, 40 million, 400,000. Dental insurance premium, 6206517. Flexible spending account, 93948. Dental insurance, 5696650. Yeah, I mean, it goes, you know, it goes on. Okay. Oh, I, just, I have I, one I just question. So, Ms. Dominowski, I have a question. So, this information... I, I wasn't, I'm still shared, talking. Yeah. How, how is it going to be used to inform governance decision? I'm just trying to get clarity on this conversation and how we're using this to inform governance and where we're going with this. Point of order, Ms. Dominowski, you had the floor and did not acknowledge Ms. Booker Dwyer um, before you were interrupted. What... I, May I ask what you I'm were saying? I'm just seeking clarity because I just I don't understand well, where this conversation is going. I'm just that's all I understand I'm, your I'm, question. That's all I'm asking. I'm just seeking clarity. And Ms. Booker Dwyer, I called a point of order because Ms. Dominowski had not acknowledged you. So I would like to her to be able to complete her uh, sentence. Ms. Thank you. And so Ms. Hen, I I'm not I couldn't see whether or not. So I wasn't even sure if you all could hear me. So that's why I just was saying something because I had not been acknowledged. So if I would have, if somebody would have said something, then I would have known. But I'm just, I'm just seeking clarity. That's all. That's all I was trying to get right now. I was trying to get clarity on what was on that page so that just for an idea, I'm not having a full blown conversation with this right now because we don't have the information in front of us. So, um, like I said, we have a lot of fixed things that we have to pay for, but we don't really talk about those in depth. And I think that would be a good conversation to have for the public to understand just how much we are required to pay. Um, that is, I mean, it's we're overseeing the budget, so I don't, I, I don't quite understand exactly how much we are required to pay. And I think that if we had a meeting on, hey, this is. This is like these are fixed things in. This is what we have to budget in for. And this this we can't, you know, we can't budge, we can't smudge, we can't, you know, whatever. But um it's just I would like to see those totals, especially when it comes to healthcare when we don't really have a say over, you know, who we choose to our provider for. So that was my main concern, right? Not concern, but just question. Yes, Miss Hen, heavy hand raised. Thank you, Ms. Dominowski. Seeing as we move this item off the agenda for today, I call for orders of the day, which requires us to move to the first item on our regular agenda as amended. Tom, yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so moving on. Sorry, let me find my, now that I've completely lost myself. And I believe Mr. McMillian has his hand acknowledged. Oh, yeah. Pardon the interruption. Yes. I wanted to make a comment about I I think the fixed piece is excellent. And and people people continually say it's our budget. If it's truly our budget, then we need to understand that. If it's not our budget and it's Dr. Rogers budget, okay. But you know, you want me to sign off on something, I want to understand it. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gamillion. 
So we'll clarify that and get more clarity so we understand fully what we'll be talking about when it comes to the fixed budget for the next meeting. And we'll move on to our next agenda item, which is budget line transfers. Hold on, I lost my script. Okay. So, Mr. Tantlev, will you provide an overview of the quarter three budget line transfer report? Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> um, now, everyone here has seen this at least a couple of times, but um, just to make sure, we'll do a quick review of what we're trying to accomplish. And we just talked about it a little. Um, but throughout the year, we do budget line transfers uh, for schools, for offices, uh, et cetera, for a lot of different reasons. But in the end, it's basically because someone needs to move money between activities, and those are MSDE activities that tie to how we spend uh, our money. So we do our BLTs, Throughout the year, we developed this report as a result of the efficiency study. And then basically, not exactly, but basically this forms the backbone of the budget appropriation transfer, which this is to inform the, the BAT is an official document, which you'll see at next week's board meeting and you'll vote on to just realign spending uh, between categories and then the county council needs to approve that to make it official. So then technically our budget changes based on uh, those movements between activities. Did you have a question, Mr. McMillian, or did you withdraw that? No, I'm sorry, that was left up. I was trying to figure out how to take it off there. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, okay. So uh, that's the background, I'll go through our Q3 report and Q3 is of interest of particular interest because it's the final movements that feed the bat so we don't do any uh, unless it's some kind of extraordinary thing happening but we normally uh, will not do any more budget line transfers throughout the year so uh, this report has all pretty much bread and butter things happening. So you can see on the top, fairly small dollars uh, just within offices, just as their needs change throughout the year. Um, you can see here the Black Boy Grant was held centrally, uh, and then it got pushed out to all of the different schools to spend their money. Um, for the school budgets, uh, you may not all be completely familiar with this, but for the school operating budgets, and this is the core budgets that the principals have for discretionary spending, might be 50, and you can see them in the budget book, but it might be 40, 50, 60,000 for, for an elementary school, it could be a couple hundred thousand for a high school. It's all based on per pupil spending, I mean budgeting. We push out in April 85% of the projected budget based on the official enrollment projection that's put together by school. Now, the enrollment's never going to be exactly correct, so that's why we only push out 85% of it. We push it out. Uh, let me restate that. In April, the schools uh, later this month, they'll all come and put their budgets together in our performance budgeting system so that the dollars are available as they want them on July 1st. Then, based on our September 30th enrollment, which you all know is our official enrollment blessed by MSDE, that becomes finalized in November. And then, either in December or January, we'll then true up how much we really owe them based on their official enrollment and the difference uh, gets pushed out to them. Now, for most people, it's not going to be exactly 15%. It could be 5%. It could be 20%. It just matters based on their final enrollment. Yes, Ms. Hen. Thanks, Mr. Tantliff. Um, I just wanted to go back to your comment about, um, you said that no more budget line transfers would be coming this year. You meant this fiscal year, correct? That's what um, I meant, for, yes. For 24? Awesome. Yes. Um, 
I had a quick question about that. We've got sure. two, two and a half months left of school. If a school's depleted um, its funds and say they have a, a need for this year um, spending, um, I'll give you give you an example to make this a little more concrete. Pine Grove Elementary um, posted something asking for ukuleles for students. They would love to do a ukulele lesson for a music class. And the teacher commented that I doubt we have funding for this. Um, it was an unplanned expense. Is that something that could be accommodated outside of the budget line transfer if they were to work with um, one of our offices to make that available outside of that process? Or are we saying what's done is done and get through the end of the year with what you have? Is that something you can speak to? If not, I'll hold my question. Um, well, I can't speak to the ukulele exactly, but let's say- Let's uh, say $500. You know, well, something that's, that's small. not a material expense. So if it was something important and they actually were out of budget dollars, then they would, and um, I don't know if that goes on their P card or on a purchase order, but if it's on a P card, uh, the expenditure would go through because P card expenses don't get stopped. Mm -hmm. um, but let's say they needed a purchase order and they were out of money and their executive director made the argument that it was really important forget the ukulele piece of it, but just there was some important yeah. thing uh, that they just didn't have enough money for. And, and so they can't drop a PO because once they spend their full budget, they can't drop a PO. So then the request would come to me to provide an override with the reasoning and something like $500 is not obviously material. So it, it's not something that's going to get a ton of conversation. Um, but okay. they would just get permission to spend that money. Or if it was an office, which I think you maybe said, if they have the money, they could just spend the spent by the ukuleles and ship them to the school and have, but have them ship delivered to the school. Right. I, I know that seems like a small request, but thank you for your answer. I was curious as to whether um, the offices had discretion to, for a non-material amount, make that transfer outside the budget line transfer process. Well, they because wouldn't two and have, to have months is not long for us, but in school time, things come yeah. up, right? And they may need. Well, see, they can't transfer the money to the school. They would just pay for it and they would ship pay it for it directly. School. Okay. Yeah. And and I think all of this would also go into the context of where we how we're how we're sitting overall. Um, you know, if we if we are on our bottom line, ha having more dollars available, you know, if mm -hmm. we're projecting to be we're comfortable as we move into year end. We have more ability to take care of maybe some things that weren't budgeted, you know, but those things should be, we would never um, just say, hey, you know, that's that's not a big amount. Go ahead and, and overspend your, your, your budget at this point in the year, because we have to look at, um, we have to look at where the uh, system is overall, because just because your own particular budget is either there's dollars there or it's out overspent. We really need to look at the, the context of the whole budget. How are we doing overall? Um, and if too many folks are doing one of the things we kind of draw down spending towards the end of the year, because mm -hmm. if too many folks are doing things last minute and at the last minute, many people were to overspend their budget, that could be problematic. Sure. So we really kind of shut down most spending is supposed to be happening at the beginning. Like if you're running a school, yeah, you want to do your uh, budget spending more earlier in the year, you know, because you want the kids to have use of whatever you're doing. Like if the plan was to buy ukuleles, you'd really want to buy them at the beginning because that's when the kids could actually use the ukuleles do throughout the year. When you get later in the year, you're really looking at next year now. You're looking, you know, yes, there's a possibility they could use some of the, you know, they could use it for a bit of this year, but you're really looking more for next year. Um, and that probably is more appropriate for next year's next year's budget. So sure. Um, in this case, the the teacher was providing, let's say he has a class of 20 and he found right. 15 in his personal collection, said, Hey, this would be great. I need five more to get, you know, a lesson on this for his class. Do principals know that there's a process to make those types of requests or would that be a flat out denial? I know you can't speak for every principal, but is there a process 
um, by which they could say, hey, this is an extraordinary need. It's not a large amount. And is that something that would come up through your office, as Mr. Tantliff said, for override approval or through the, their executive director? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the, the answer is, is that, um, you know, once you've exhausted your current budget, you really, uh, you, you shouldn't be overspending your budget, but y- mm-hmm. you do have, you know, an executive director that you could speak with to say, hey, you know, something has occurred later in the year. And, um, you know, we don't need a lot of money, but we we would like to be able to, um, you know, take care of this, this, this item. Is there, can we get some help? Um, and with a small item like that, you know, that's you know, to our law, to our budget, that's really not material, but we, we watch, you have to watch that kind of messaging because, you know, sure. you know what I mean? You don't we want, want people, to be fiscally conscious. You want, yes. We'd rather people say, I, I don't know if I talked to you. Ms. Oh, Ms. I'm sorry. And I, I appreciate yeah. what you were saying, Mr. Yes. Hartlove, about depending on what state we're in. It's one yeah. thing if that office has excess funds, you right. would want those distributed to where the needs are, which is our students, right. first and right. foremost. Right. Um, so I, I appreciate what you're saying. And sorry to talk over you. It's a little, no, 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 there's I'm a little sorry. lag I'm... on my end with the vir- virtual forum setting. We're, we're, we're good. So I think, oh, it looks like Mr. Uh, McMillian. Yeah. Do you have a question? Yes. Mr. Tantliff, I'm just trying to understand. You said the procurement card, if they did it on a P card, so if somebody had spent their budget and they wanted to go out and buy these ukuleles, they could use the P card. There's no oversight on that card and where their budget is and and that point in time. Yeah, no, definitely. No, there's there's uh, a deadline for spending on the P card, but if it was the very last payment of the year. Um, they would have the potential to go over the budget because it ha- the bill has to be paid, but there would probably be ramifications for that if it was material because uh, we send letters to the overspenders at the end of the year. So I'm just saying, I guess you could, you know, there's, that that could in theory happen at the very end. There's there's Mr. McMahon, just to put your mind at ease, we have accountability. The budget office, if someone overspends their budget, there is a school. They they go back and say, hey, you know, at the end of the year, they should be managing their budget and not overspending their budget. Um, with procurement cards, we keep procurement cards open because they can be used for any kind of like emergency types of expenditure. So we don't shut them off. Um, and there's a possibility that someone could buy something that could then throw them over budget but they there would be around it they shouldn't be doing that because they should have they should understand their budget number one and number two if they were to overspend their budget um there are ramifications there are there's accountability um you know um after after the fact so it's it's that is um because we we don't want to turn procurement cards off i mean that would be a, 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 a an option to say look you just can't use your procurement card after a certain date but we like to keep them open because they are useful for handling things that need to be handled quickly by a school you know so that's why we keep them open thank you okay. Ms. Han? all right thank you i just had a quick follow-up and i know we need to move on um sorry about that if in the case of offices having excess funds at the end of the year and meeting our school's needs first as a priority. This is my concern that an office may say, okay, I've got these discretionary funds. I'm going to go upgrade my office furniture or something that is um, not instructionally significant. And meanwhile, we have a need, um, go back to my ukulele example, in the classroom that's helping kids. Do we have any processes that say, okay, before we spend on office supplies or um, overhead it is in the commercial industry what what we would term that do we have any processes in place or can we put any processes in place to gauge what those other need those other my, more pressing needs might be to put those funds in our schools in our classrooms to meet teachers needs because they are the impression that no means no and that's good that's a great discipline mindset to have but if there are excess funds at the end of the year, and I'm asking about this um, right. in relation to the, the BLT, um, 
transfer process, do we try to meet those needs first, I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah, I, I think that's a good question. There, there are kind of like two parts of to the to the fiscal year. There's the the early part of the fiscal year where you know folks who have budget responsibility have a budget and they work within their budget. So if one of the things that they were had planned on was was upgrading their their office furniture through their their budget, then they would do then they would do that. But when we get later in the year, we in effect have a, a spending cut off where you're not you know you wouldn't wait until the last day of the year to say hey you know I'm going to now go out and buy some furniture independently on your own that would be you know we that would be after the spending cut off that's that is supposed to occur you know before spending before the spending cut off after we get you know we get to later the later portion of the year if if we are in a year where things are very tight then there's not the kind of openings to go out and and do anything really over and above what's what was budgeted. If we're in a you know if we're in a, in a good year where maybe some of the things that we budgeted didn't come in as expensive, you know weren't as expensive as we anticipated, and we have opportunities, we try to look at that from a sy systemic perspective and not from a hey you know go out and do what you want to do because we have some extra money. We would we would try to get those. We would try to get the, a, a list and prioritize that list. And then take material items. We would try mm -hmm. to take care of that list with the dollars that were left at the end of the year. So, so the, it's an opportunity. It can either flow to fund balance, which so it's still our money, or if there's something that we need to take care of and we weren't able to take care of it during the regular year, and it's a priority of the organization. And office furniture wouldn't be a priority unless we had some really egregious situation okay. where somebody's office furniture was you know, falling apart, then that may be something that we decided to do. But, you know, more than likely, we're going to be looking at a list and we're going to be prioritizing school-based instructional things first. Um, and maybe also emergency types of things that may be not instructional, but are critical because they're, you know, just something is in it way beyond end of life or something to that extent. But we do, we do, you know, we do look at opportunities like having excess dollars available at the, at the at the end of the year that's an opportunity and you it shouldn't be a free-for-all it should be something that's prioritized and and structured and um so that's kind of hopefully that answers thank, answers the question thank you it does and i would imagine we have controls in place that review that to see if it was part of the original budget request for that department to say oh yes their furniture is falling apart this was a planned um, expense yes. at the beginning of the year, and you wouldn't expect to see that because with this, what I've heard of is described as a use it or lose it mentality, right? Um, right? There can be, and I've seen this in other organizations, a scrambling to use what's left or exactly like that to quote unquote lose it, even though we know it rolls into our fund balance. Right. Um, it's still out of the control of that department to to we, spend and what i would rather approve would be a blanket reallocation of funds to our schools for those right. unmet needs that were um let's say originally requested but not able to be granted so a b list per se on the priorities right. but if right. it's you know in our schools and that's and and that's certainly something that we when we're not able to fund something when something gets cut out of the operating budget we certainly have that in our back pocket for end of year you know like said, it got cut out of the budget but it was a high priority just didn't have quite the funding that we needed okay so the year starts we get to the end of the year and we have some money available and that was one of the things we wanted to do but we couldn't quite afford it we would look at some look to something like that to try to try to accomplish Thank you. Do we ever boost the school allocations using those excess funds, I'm or is that aware, only the I'm not aware of us ever doing something like that. But I don't know if Mr. Tantliff can speak. No, to that. we we it wouldn't it wouldn't really make any sense, Ms. Hen, because by the time you knew about it, all the spending deadlines would be the deadlines start happening in late March, where we start cutting off spending. April it depends on what type of spend. So by the time you even knew you had money, the schools would have no time to spend it and they certainly couldn't spend it and use it in that year kind of like what Mr. Hartlove was saying earlier schools need to spend money early other than if it's like paper and supplies and stuff like that so it couldn't be that critical if it's if it's May or June and you're just thinking about it then but 
it, it would probably it would be impractical to do that. But that's why if there is some one off critical need, there's a process where it can be bubbled up and addressed. Thank you. I don't want to derail us any further. Maybe this can be a future agenda item. So I'll turn it back to Ms. Domanowski. Thank you both. Sure. Um, so in any case, you can see there's a bunch of hold back, the school budgets. And then uh, later on, you're going to see here. So this is just money within offices, magnet, moving their money around. Um, you're going to see a lot of, uh, well, this is workforce development. So uh, this was moving the dollars into place for workforce uh, development for our portion of the budget. Uh, for anyone who's unfamiliar with it, workforce development, uh, we send a chunk of it to the county. We keep a chunk of it. it there's an MOU between the parties. Uh, that gets approved by AIB on how we're going to spend and support workforce development. So that's just showing the money getting moved around. And concentration of poverty, uh, there's a lot of movement within schools as their budgets get solidified as the year goes on. So you can see there was a lot of uh, blueprint uh, COP money moving around. So you can see it all here. And you can see there's there's two different components of uh, COP. So that was a lot of it uh, in this budget. So it just took them kind of till mid-year uh, to really get their budgets finalized and to move everything around. So that's really it. This was, in the end, a pretty bread and butter quarterly report. There was nothing uh, extraordinary going on, but always good to review it and talk about the process. And it always generates uh, some questions. So. If there's anything else you want to ask, uh, feel free or else uh, that's it for this topic. I just had one question and we may have covered this before. Are all of these um, connected to a contract that has been passed by the board? Like all of these expenses, are, are they aligned with every contract that's been passed? Approved contracts? Well, um, I mean, a lot of these expenses are mileage reimbursement, supplies. It's it's small movements within someone's budget. So uh, if they're buying something on a contract, then there has to be contract authority that the board approved available. So if you approve a contract for $5 million, people are purchased. Sometimes it's just a single person, you know, it's uh, ELA books. Sometimes it's many people tapping into that same contract, so there has to be contract authority. But the if the office isn't directly managing that contract, and obviously some offices own the contract, but if yeah. you're just using it, uh, purchasing is monitoring those contracts used by multiple parties and then making sure they go to the board to get more spending authority or making sure it goes back out to bid. But they're they're kind of separate processes unless the office owns that contract they need because remember contracts go over multiple years too so they're they're kind of independent activities you need to have contract authority if you're purchasing something on a contract but the amount of the contract is not tied to any one budget necessarily it could be because it could be a one-year contract and so there has to be enough money in that year but if it spans multiple years, well, you could have a contract and you have authority in FY25 for 20 million, but you might only budget 5 million. And that means you could only spend 5 million against that contract. So the contract gives you authority to spend, but that doesn't mean you have the budget dollars available. Okay, so I guess what I mean is like, not necessarily for the school budgets, but for, you know, Facilities and support services or CNI, um, every, you know, call, like every thing that they buy or they they put down for, um, I don't know, contract employees or mechanical, I'm just trying to re plumbing, are all of those connected to a contract that we have already approved? 
Well, you they, couldn't spend they're, the they're money. They're not buying if anything no... outside of, of an approved contract or an approved vendor. Is that what I'm getting at? N no, there'd be. It, there's a rare case where uh, that may happen, but normally you need to have contract authority before you can't. You can't drop a PO unless you have contract authority, and we have controls in place to make sure that that happens. I'm not saying there's never some one-off. Uh, thing that may occur. And like I said, a lot of offices are purchasing things that they don't manage that contract. It might be a central contract that purchasing has to keep an eye on to make sure there's enough spending authority and uh, to make sure if we need to uh, increase the authority, it goes to the board in time, or if it's time to go out for a new contract, that happens in time. And there's, uh, as I mentioned, some offices manage the contract and budget against the contract, but the contracts normally go over multiple years. So you may or may not, you can't spend more than you budgeted and you can't spend more than you have contract authority for. So it's kind of two parallel paths. If you have a five-year contract for 25 million, you may spend 5 million a year. You may spend 1 million a year. And then by the end, you've only spent five of the 25. The contract gives us authority to spend up to that amount if we have the available funds. And I, and I think that was what Mr. Tantliff said right there at the end, I think was the is the key. It's really, you know, we have in effect two controls in place. You have the control of the of the contract. Can't, you know, you we can't spend without contract authority. You also can't just because you have contract authority, like Mr. Tantliff was saying, we could have a large contract that spans multiple years. But we may not, you know, we would have a much smaller amount of budget in one fiscal year. So you have to have both the uh, the uh, contract authority to spend, and you also have to bud have to have the budget to spend. So it's kind of a double double control in place. So that keeps people from um, that keeps us within our keeps us within our budget, and also keeps um, we want to make sure that everything that we procure that's of a sizable manner has gone past the board. So that's so so that's what we're doing. So I guess what I'm trying to get at here is we have all these, you know, the transfers, what what we spend, um, what they needed, but I don't know, like I, I, there's a general description of what it is, but are there, is there a contract or a receipt that backs up where that money went to, like who, what, what they actually purchased with that and, and who we purchased it from? Is that, so is that making more sense? Is that more clear? I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm understanding, but I think what it, what it goes down to is they're also two separate things like we, you know, so, so when someone tries to spend and they don't have a contract in place, if it's over a certain uh, uh, level, they can't do that. They have to have a contract that's approved contract in that was approved by the budget in place. That's one step. And then the, um, and then the budget is also your that's your kind of your fiscal control. It's saying, you know, you can't spend over this amount of money in your in your budget. So those two, they're not the exact same control, but every dollar we spend, unless it's for a small ticket item, smaller items, we don't run, we don't, you know, run past the board when we want to buy something smaller. But the high high value, uh, the higher dollar value items go to the, you know, have to be a bid and approved by the board. So every dollar that we spend that's of a, um, a material amount has is tied to an approved contract. The budget is not tied line by line to those contracts, but but the budget is a fiscal uh, control that says, OK, not only do you have to spend on things that have been contracted, but you also can only spend this amount of money. So, you know, and I know there are the cases where we've had, you know, we've had a con we've been going in one direction. We have a contract in place and then we decide we're going to uh, move to like another curriculum or something like that. So we may have two contracts, but you could never buy both things because you don't have the, do the budget dollars to do that. So even though we would have like the old contract that we're kind of de-emphasizing and the new contract that we're now we're emphasizing, you could not do both because you wouldn't have the dollars in place to do that. I'm going to try one more time and then I'm going to get <laughs> off this topic. <laughs> what I'm saying is like in theory, not saying we have to go through this every single time, but like um, 
I'm going to take one line um, on page 12 where um, general maintenance contracts for roofing repairs for 529,000. In theory, if someone needed to pull that up, you know, to see like who, where, like who, what, what exactly was spent with that money? Like, a, I guess a receipt or itemized receipt or the con like the contracting service, or could we go look that up and find yes. it and say this yes. is because there's a purchase order that had to be dropped yes okay against yes. the contract for them to pay and then to send a payment to the vendor so when the vendor invoice comes in it has to be matched against the purchase order that generated the order so the vendor has the purchase order they put the purchase order number on the invoice and then that's how it comes into accounts payable what you're looking what you were looking at here this is a report my team put together in excel and that's how we chose to summarize things but i mean any data is available in the system you can go pull every invoice if you wanted to i don't uh <laughs> recommend that but i'm just saying if right. you needed a paper trail of something right you can keep tracking stuff down pretty low you can track it to the p card and see what was purchased or the purchase order or the invoice. So all of those things uh, exist, but normally you're not going to need to look at those sorts of things, but they can all be drilled down into when that information is needed. And just for giggles, where where would I find that? If I wanted to go down that rabbit hole by myself? You, you couldn't, I don't think you could easily find that. You would need to put in a request because you don't use our systems. Okay, so it's not public information. It would be something that you'd have to it, request. All of our information is public information, but you that some of it is because of the it's system. Not acceptable. It's not accessible. So we, if someone says, I would like to see like that line item, if you, if you said, hey, could you give us the the detail on that? We could do that. We could do that. We, okay. we wouldn't want to do it, you know, because the problem is that it kind of opens up a can of worms. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to kind of because they there's two that five hundred thousand dollars could be one thing. Or it could be five hundred thousand one dollar items. So it, you know, it, it, so we don't know what it. You know, just looking at the number, we don't know what it is. But we, but it, it could be a lot of detail, or it could be you know, kind of not that many. It could be two or three things. Um, but especially the big ticket items. Now the smaller ticket items, you're not going to necessarily be tied to a contract. You know, if you, uh, you know, because they're. If we go out and you buy pay something for a for conference, you pay to yes. go to a conference. Yes, if we yes, a conference is not going to be if the registration fees are not going to be, you know, if we pay two hundred dollars to for a registration fee, that's not a contract that we have. That's just going to be something on a P card that how we spent it. But we can tell you how we spent the that, you know, we know that what it is. It's just it's not going to be tied to a contract in that case. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Um does, are there any other questions on this or from board members or chair? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, sure. We will move um, on to uh, the committee will discuss the budget committee's purpose and measures of effectiveness. So um, I, I worked on this document a couple of weeks ago, so I'm not, is it, are we able to show it? I think who has the document? Mr. Uh, Corns Mr. could probably Corns. let you know if you could share it. Can we, Mr. Corns? Can we share the um, that document? Um, Ms. Dominowski, I apologize. What document okay. do we need to have shared? Um, it is the, oh gosh, the about the budget committee purpose and measures effectiveness. It should be in the okay. board docs. Um, Ma'am, I don't have it downloaded. It'll take me a minute to get it. Okay. Am I allowed to share? I don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. If you have it oh, up, okay. you can I, certainly then click. I can do it. Sorry, I wasn't sure. I've yeah. never shared before. Yeah, just um, uh, up in the uh, upper uh, right-hand corner, click cho choose share, and then choose window, and then okay. pick the, the window that is your document. Yeah, I just want to go find it before you, I share my whole computer screen. And oh, no, please do not share your whole computer screen, just the window. Oh, just the window. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, okay, there it is. is this it? 
Nope, that's not it. Let me, I'm sorry, give me, bear with me. No worries, and I am also uh, trying to get to board docs as quickly as I can if I can alleviate this. Yep, I got it. I found it. Okay. Um, okay, share. Sorry. Screen or no, win win window. What if I have seven windows open? <laughs> it's okay. It'll ask you which window you'd okay. like to share on the next. Thank you. Um, dun, dun, dun. There it is. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah, uh, I see a document that says uh, uh, board committees and purpose in blue. So this looks like the one you wanted. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a board, I just, I think Tierra, Ms. Booker Dreyer mm -hmm. had to step out. So it's just Ms. Hen and Mr. McMillian. Have you had a chance to review any of this? I'm sorry, I did not. Do you want me to read it? <laughs> don't need to read it I can, no well I can I mean I can read it out loud um, it's so this is just something I put together and I am it, I'm not married to it so it just kind of was putting some ideas down um, for our purpose and measures of effectiveness and um, the dates obviously they are placeholders they are not set in stone that probably Mr. Hotlove you can make those dates better I just kind of was putting them there for topic ideas more than I was the actual dates. So don't um, take those dates seriously, I guess. Um, OK, so basically for the purpose I wrote down to review the fiscal year operating budget, share the information with constituent groups and generate recommendations for the superintendent's consideration in the budget development process. Members will be asked to serve in rotation for one school year cycle. Responsibilities will include attendance at meetings and sharing of information with their representative group and to represent the interests of all programs and services for the Baltimore County public school system. The budget is fluid and therefore under constant revision as revenues and expenditures are clarified. The budget committee is a vessel to disseminate information to as many parents, students, staff, and community members as possible. The committee shall serve as an advisor in nature and will not have decision-making responsibilities. Any thoughts on that? Just well, I've got a couple. Ms. Hen, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I would like to see some more specificity in terms of, or clarification around decision-making responsibilities that the committee shall make recommendations to the full board as we do make decisions as a um, board. So I don't know if that um, statement precludes our role in making those recommendations. That's how I interpreted it. So I would like to see that um, change to indicate that the committee may make recommendations to the full board. Um, let me just kind of for budget um, decisions. Oops. I'm really bad at I should not be the one doing this. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, I uh, what did I do? And Miss Dominowski, I just I did this as you this is the board's decision making and discussion side, but I just though I was at the I attended the audit committee last night. I thought I uh, like what Mr. Uh, McMillian's approach was. I think you got this. You got this put together as a, as a draft. You may want to. Since Mr. McMillian hasn't been able to review it and Ms. Booker Dwyer is not here, maybe what you want to do is we can continue to have that continue to have the discussion tonight, but then say, you know, we're going to bring it back to the next meeting after everybody and then really then maybe you can uh, you know vote on it and agree to it oh yeah at the next the, meeting. this is kind of like a work session yes too, okay that's there. good that's good yeah. i i didn't know that you know you know whether you even have to make you could just make maybe take notes and and you know write down some of the changes and you do you whether you need to do them online now or not that's your call i guess yeah i'm just kind of i am that's what i'm doing just putting little notes and then i can clean it up later, but just so I, I don't forget. Um, but thank you. Um, Ms. Hen, I mean, I'll, I will word, you know. Whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think you've got I, it. I'll, I'll redo it all, but I just wanted to put it in. I just so I have that note in my head there, uh, Mr. McMillian. Yeah, I just noticed the. I guess the second paragraph or sentence or so. Members will be asked to serve a rotation for one school year cycle. You know, so does that mean that you know, I'm done. Miss Hen's done after this school year. I, I mean, where did that come from? <laughs> it kind of went with what um, with with Miss Booker Dreyer said that instead of we was we were supposed to serve like um, December or January to December. And so instead of doing, you know, the the actual calendar year to do a, a fiscal school year, so it would be, yes, technically we should be done, but um, we're still on. And um, it would be, you know, July to June as far as you would stay so that we had the members, the board members wouldn't change in the middle of a school year. Is that making more sense? Yeah, so I am done. Okay. <laughs> that that's a concern for me too, because if we're yeah. building capacity, as Ms. Booker Dwyer has suggested, then there's a huge learning curve with right. this, and there's value I see in continuity of the members serving um, beyond that. So if if we're kicked off after one year, that defeats right. the purpose. Um, well, no, uh, no. Would you just a minimum you're of one year? At least one year. Does that make sense? Like you, you're not done. Like you, you need to stay on for that full year. I get that's kind of more. I would what clarify I was that, that wording. Yeah. <laughs> so read yeah, wordsmith that needs to yeah. reword for um, a minimum. For a minimum, there you go. And I, I want to, I want to go in the direction of Mr. Burns said talked about policy directs us what we do and so with the audit committee it's it's cut and dry there is a lot of policy written that mm -hmm. gives the audit committee specific direction now at, at, as far as i'm aware because this is a relatively new committee we don't have policy backing us so does that does that mean that because we don't have policy driving this is this one of the one of the committees that there are you know are some people going to be want to get rid of this committee because we're not driven by policy and if we're not if that's the case then i think we need to hightail it to policy review and, and and create some policy that keeps this committee on the books is my opinion agreed and if we need a motion to consider this evening i support mr mr mcmillian 100 percent yeah that I would we agree need with to that. ask policy um to incorporate and maybe um they incorporate um this document as as a starting point for development of that policy with input from from us of course and, and yes. just historically you know and i i think historically it's important that and I and I said and I'll go on record as saying I did not vote for this the first time it came around. But the longer that I was in my role, I saw the need for it. And the second time around, I voted for it. So this I could see this would be a committee that some people don't want us involved in or don't want you, you know to have when when people start talking about committees and reducing the number of committees and comparing us to other school systems that have no committees or very few committees. I think that this is a real value and I'll I'll fight what I can, you know, to try to keep this on the books. Thanks. Ms. Domineski, do we need a motion to make a recommendation as a committee to ask the policy review committee to um, develop a draft budget committee policy? Because if so, I'll make that motion or if um, Mr. McMillian wants to. I'll second it. I'll second your motion. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So just if, if you clarify what the, mo I mean, uh, clarify what the motion would be. Um, sure. The motion is to ask the policy review committee as the, as the budget committee to ask right. the, the PRC to develop a budget committee policy. So there was one, I mean, I, I'll support that, not to, I don't know if I'm, I'm totally overstepping this, but I, 
I had made a suggestion about, um, you know, having a motion to a while back about um, asking PRC or another committee to, you know, look over something or, or consider a, a change. And I was told that as committee, as a committee, we can't do that. So I don't know if that's true, and I'd probably have to um, talk to if I'm explaining it correctly. But um, does that sound like? Does anybody remember that? Yeah, we we can take it. I've done it both ways. I've okay. taken things to the board and have gone to committees. Have gone to other committees directly. But if we need to take it to the full board, that's that's fine. I'd amend my motion. Okay. I just and then, I, that it was in curriculum committee. I made a I had made a a motion for policy review to look over something, and I wasn't. I was told I wasn't allowed to do that. So I'm just. Uh, I don't know if we need to make a motion or if we just wait. Then maybe. So uh, I think it might need to be done during the full board. Okay. Yeah. Then if we we may not need a formal motion, but right. I, if you would add if you would make that motion during your committee yes. update in the yes. next meeting. Yeah. Yes. I think we. If you, yeah. So we can that. help me wordsmith it. Yes. You bet. You bet. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. So I, I agree with that. We should have a a policy that backs up the budget committee so that we can, you know. And actually, I think even um, gosh, was, I always want to call him the um, the board um, council. Board where, yeah, board council had something about saying that the budget committee was the only committee that actually has a document that states it because because of it was voted on by the board. Mm -hmm. So really, we might not have a policy, but we do have we were was a motion that was approved. Like Mr. McMillan, you said you voted, didn't vote for it the second time, but you voted for it the second the didn't vote for it the first time, but the second time. So we we're the only one that has that. I guess. Yes. Uh, so it would. Yeah. Mr. Burns could confirm or council could confirm. Yeah. But it would take sure. a motion of the board to um, eliminate the committee. Okay. Since the board created it. Gotcha. And, and, and it would seem to me it'd be a whole lot more difficult if there was policy. Correct. No, yes. I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Yes. Agreed. So policy. Okay. Moving on. So I'll we'll work on that. And then. Um, so the next part was about measures of effectiveness. Let me just highlight this part. Okay. Uh, provided information to help make better decisions in the budget development process. Uh, reviewed cost savings through better best practices in all departments compared Proposed fiscal year budget with ask, actual fiscal year budget. Uh, I think I, I was just trying to put things down that we would easily be able to show in a uh, in a meeting. Things that we could cover. I don't know if any of it makes sense. Anybody have any thoughts? I I like the idea that uh, Mr. Hartlove or something said earlier in an email today about when he was at the meeting he couldn't prepare the monthly financial piece mm -hmm. i think that's a great idea because in audit we have those monthly updates reports financial Also, as a deliverable of the committee um, to meet our purpose of disseminating information to the public, I think the committee updates that are provided at board meetings mm -hmm. are an important measure of effectiveness because what's shared there um, to the public, and we have larger viewership of the full meetings than committee meetings, accomplishes that purpose of disseminating that information to our public. Um, in terms of the sentence, the budget committee is a vessel to disseminate information to as many parents, students, staff, and community members as possible. Correct. 
So I think that's already being done and can be can continue and be even more expansive. Again, everything that's highlighted is just notes for me. OK. So anything else? Also, I think there's a role to play in the board's um, deliberations and work sessions on the budget itself for the budget committee to take a leadership role in that in terms of um, making recommendations that that we've seen, sharing information, answering questions from a governance perspective in terms of our processes, what we've reviewed. That's happened in the past somewhat organically, but perhaps scheduling um, time for the budget committee in each budget session to answer questions or if there's anything we want to present. You know, taking 15 minutes on the on the agenda of as a sub agenda item almost of those budget sessions. And taking a leadership role in that discussion. Since we're actively engaged in it. Uh, agenda. Okay. Am I kind of capturing at least the gist until I that's on is that kind of is that what you're what you mean as far as Taking Definitely. More, like having more to do with the agenda when it comes to our budget work sessions as a full yes. board. And okay. that um, really what I'm getting at is knowledge transfer okay. on particular items. Um, and it helps the board meetings run more efficiently too, because um, if we can answer some of those questions even in advance based on discussions we have in this committee meeting, then I think our, our work sessions will be shorter. Um, Mr. McMillian can speak to this. In the, in the past, um, they seem to have been since this committee was founded, because a lot of the same, the people who are interested in and ask the most questions were on, are, have been on the committee, right? So our work sessions have been more efficient uh, as a result. And I think with as many new board members as we have, we have a responsibility um, to, to assist the others with their questions and transfer that knowledge. So I'm, I'm not. Um, so do you mean maybe you want to take the knowledge transfer or an efficiency? Uh, you mean like when we submit questions about the budget and then with the email and then we'll get like that report back. Do you want um, the budget committee to kind of be able to go over those questions? I, I think some sometimes the questions um, come from a professional development standpoint in learning um, how the budget is structured, how it works, and in terms of assistance with onboarding um, members or familiarizing members with that process. I know we now have training for the student member, but mm -hmm. frequently we'll have questions come up during those work sessions that maybe they're on topics that we have discussed um, during the budget committee. So, or giving the um, other board members a chance to ask questions of the committee whether we've looked at something or not. I just think we can um, take a leadership role in, in those discussions and assist, not with the specific budget questions themselves, but it more so from a process and governance perspective. Okay. And of course, staff do a great job answering the questions, but they answer, you know, right. the, the same questions and sometimes it's helpful um, hearing the responses from from our perspective too. So would that go down to like a like a budget 
committee topic. Do you think too? Or should we add that in as far as um, when the timeline comes down to when the budget is being processed, like when the budget's laid out as given to us, and then we're we're asked to given you know the opportunity to submit our questions. Should I put that into you know into a topic for that area for our budget committee to go over um, the budget? questions that were submitted by board um, members. To maybe not on the questions submitted. I think the superintendent um, spearheads that and, mm -hmm. and funnels those out to, to staff to answer, but maybe there's an opportunity for the committee to lead a work session, an additional work session on it. So that, that members can ask. No, yeah, that's oh, I'm sorry. Review those exactly, questions. general questions. Yeah. Yep. In more detail, okay, okay. Okay. Anything else there? I would just ask Mr. McMillian if he had any other ideas or suggestions yeah. or if he thought that would be helpful. It looks good to me, but, it, you know, back, and I don't mean to be a negative Nelly, but, it, you know, it all goes back to policy. Right. Uh, this might be for naught if, if we can't get a policy through. Well, will we be prepared? Will we be prepared? I think that if we have this and then ask for the policy, it would be helpful. You know what I mean? If we have yeah, yeah this gives direction to the policy, no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Um sorry, I didn't mean not to raise my hand. Um not to intervene. I just want to make sure if you're going to um postpone the document till a further budget meeting, you need to vote on it. Oh, we do. What are we supposed to? So, if you want to uh, postpone finalizing it, finalize it. It would okay. Be postponed. So, should I make a motion to move the vote on approving the budget committee's purpose, measures of effectiveness um, document to the next board meeting on? May the 15th. I'm comfortable with approving a draft. Um, so I would not support completely postponing it. I think we've made progress and I trust the wordsmithing that will happen to cap, you know, you've captured um, the committee's feedback and I would like to see this move forward in the format that it's in with the understanding that you know, some some tweaking will be done to the wording. But All I think right. you've captured the the main ideas here. How do I go back to it? I can't find okay. Um, so I don't have in my commissioning comments screen members. So okay. So I don't have in my script that we need to vote on this. It doesn't mean that we don't need to do it, but I'm just trying to think of how to state it. Um, uh, motion to approved a draft. The, um, yeah. How do I state that? Um, do you want one of us to make the motion? Yes. Do you want to withdraw? Okay. okay. I think you, you, so. There's a motion on the floor. If you want to, yeah. Um, withdraw your postponement. I will. Motion. I'll withdraw my 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 motion to um, postpone. Okay. I move to approve the draft um, budget committee document. I don't know what we're calling this. Um, the draft 24-25 Board of Education budget committee um, document as is um, for further refinement. And I second that. May I have a roll call vote? Are there any discussions? Sorry. Uh, Ms. Vaya, may I have a roll call vote? Yes. Ms. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Fenn? Yes. Ms. Zalmanowski? Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, with that, unless we have any other questions that I or comments about any about this document or I'm good. Here. Thank you. Sure. 
Hearing none, the last item on the agenda is announcements, which uh, the announcements are the next budget committee meeting will be Wednesday, May 15th, also at 530 on Teams. If there are no, is there any further business? I already asked that. <laughs> Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. Have fun. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.